Okay, so back in 2021, I had dual monitor set up on a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, I'm going to try and get uh, dual or even three monitors running on a Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, now, I'm not sure if the driver that I used in this video will work, but I do have something else which should work fine. Uh, so this is a display link adapter, which is a way of adding an extra HDMI to a computer. And this works with Linux, it also works with Mac OS and Windows, and it's literally USB 3 to HDMI. So this has got almost like a little graphics card in it, not a powerful one, um, but almost like a graphics card which converts a USB signal to an HDMI signal. So if I first of all go to the Display Link site, and here we can get support and download drivers and just scroll down until we can see Windows and let's download this I'll just save that okay so now that's finished let's open that and yes let's close down the browser now I have already done this on my Oracle USB stick which is a nice fast USB stick which I've got Windows on and installed a load of games and been playing around with it I showed a shorts video the other day uh, because it allows you to set different desktop resolutions which you can't normally do with Windows on Raspberry Pi 5. But unfortunately that USB stick doesn't seem to work anymore. Uh, I probably do have to reformat it. Something went wrong. I think it's an update to Windows. Anyway, let's do uh, install. It's lovely and easy. I've spent hours and hours trying to get this to work with Linux on Raspberry Pi but others have definitely had problems so I've given up. I tried about four different operating systems. Tried Pi 4, Pi 5, uh, it, it just doesn't seem to have very good support. But with Windows and also with Mac OS, it's super easy. So you can see here, it offers to get Display Link Manager from the Microsoft Store. And uh, I did that before in the other one and it was pretty useful. So let's just install that. And I've installed it and also rebooted and now you can see that I've got dual displays. But at the moment, if I move my mouse about, uh, it's actually the wrong way around so I can't go left I can only go right so I need to play around with that to get it right and because we've installed the app we can do it with that so let's just close down the Windows Store so you can see this is the LG display that I've got connected to the display link adapter so if I click on it you can see I can change the resolution right down to 640 by 480 not on the monitor I'm showing at the moment on the other monitor so I'm going to leave it as it is for a second uh, I've also got landscape portrait, landscape flip, portrait flipped. And at the moment it's an extended display. But you can actually boot it with just the display link adapter and use it like that and I'll show that in a minute. So if I want to change the monitor that I'm on at the moment, so this is uh, an Acer monitor which is going through my capture card. So you can see it thinks it's on the left at the moment. It's greyed out so you can't change the resolution which I've always wanted to be able to change because that really improves performance when you're on a, a system that's that's struggling a bit with games lowering the resolution definitely helps if you have to run at 1920 by 1080 it struggles so on here as well we have uh, this to do the display layout so I need to change these two around because they're this way around so let's hit apply and we have dual monitor support so I can drag over and uh, if I open the web browser for instance I can grab that and put it on the other display and do it as full screen and you can see everything is working as it should be. So let's concentrate on the display port display. So if I was to shut this down now and unplug the HDMI cable. So I've got no HDMI's plugged into here, just the display link adapter which is going into this LG monitor. But I'm going to change it to this monitor because then I can capture it because that's going through a capture card. Hopefully that will work, I haven't tried that yet. So let's press and hold to power that off. So let's switch that on. And I thought it wasn't going to work then, but it has worked. So if I hit space and I can log into that. So this is all running through the display link adapter, not through any of the HDMI sockets. And if you press the Windows key, you can see all of that is working. And you can see display settings comes up, so let's click on that. And this is the ordinary Windows one. So I can choose a different desktop resolution in this. You can see I can choose 720 or 1080. But if I use the display link ones in this display link manager and click on the monitor, you see it comes up. It doesn't say LG anymore because that's the capture device. It's going to the Ava Media capture device. 
So I can now choose more resolutions. Funnily enough, I have more resolutions on the LG monitor. I had about eight or nine, uh, but on this one you can see there's not as many. But if we go right down to 640 by 480 and keep those changes, you can see that I now have Windows running at 640 by 480, which obviously isn't great for Windows, but if you're playing a really old game and we don't have GPU support on the Raspberry Pi 5 with Windows, it means that we're going to get better performance. But also we can go in between, so we can do something like 720, which I think is quite a usable desktop resolution. It's good for screen capturing. You can see it doesn't really lag that much. Considering it's going through display link, I expected the performance to be worse. So the plan was to do Raspberry Pi 5 with three monitors, but I've realized watching the video back, that could be problematic. I might still try it separately, but the old video was on Windows 10, it was on a Raspberry Pi 4, and it had a driver especially for the Pi 4. So I'm gonna try Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm gonna install that driver, the same as I did in the video before, and see if it works. If you can hear noises in the background, it's because of these guys. And uh, I'll just show my current desk setup. So normally this is open, but I've had to make a barrier because all they wanna do is get behind my desk. So at the moment, that's my current desktop. Okay, so I've spent many hours on this on the Raspberry Pi 4 and I can't get it to work. I had Windows 10 running absolutely fine, but when I applied the patch to do the dual monitors, it all changed, but I'd need to work out what UEFI boot we were using at the time, what firmware was on the Raspberry Pi, so there's, there's just too many variables to it. So I couldn't get three monitors running, but what I can do is play some games which I couldn't play before on Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi 5. So I've rewritten the latest version of Windows to my Oracle USB stick, and I've installed a load of games, and uh, one of them I have played is GTA Vice City. Now this works better in 640 by 480, so let's get that display link manager and lower that down. So 640 by 480, keep the changes, and hopefully I should be able to launch this. And it does, and the sound is perfect. So let's go into the options and let's just turn off the radio. And I have got this on very low settings. You can see most things are off 640 by 480. So all the intro is perfect. So you can see that it's working. I mean, it's, it's obviously not going to be the best. You wouldn't really play this with a display link adapter by choice. But if we jump in the car, we can see that it is working, albeit at a pretty bad frame rate. I don't even need a frame rate counter to tell me that the frame rate is pretty terrible. But it's a game I got working. Now, you would probably try less ambitious games uh, and games that you know didn't have such a rich 3D environment. But I did get it working and it's something that I haven't had working on Windows 11 on the Pi 5 before. Anyway, let's quit out of that and try a few more games. Crazy Taxi, I couldn't get to run. I haven't tried CS2D yet, let's give that a go. Oh. Where are they? <laughs> I didn't even see them on my screen. <laughs> Definitely working though. So Half-Life, I haven't changed any settings or anything on this. Oh, and I have got my frame counter. I didn't have my frame counter before, but I think it turns itself off when the game starts. Oh, hold on. So I think this is because OpenGL is uh, turned on. So video, yeah, OpenGL, you have to do it in software. So apply and okay. I bet I'm gonna lose my frame counter now. You can see, yeah, no frame counter, but it looks lovely and fast. I think this is the fastest I've had this. And no lag really. It really does seem to be pretty smooth. I guess there is some lag. But yeah, definitely looks great. Right, what else is there around? Probably be a bit more cautious here. I feel like I'm shooting it. Do I just need to be closer, do I? There we go. Oh, I could shoot that. Right, is there? So let's go back in again. Uh, and you can see, or I can shoot. If this thing comes for me, there you go, that's good. That's got to get rid of some things around it. Oh, yeah, oh, what? 
should probably run this at a higher resolution because it does look good. What's all the noises? Oh, oh dear. What is, oh, it did work. Where did it come from though? Anyway, you can see that is actually working really good. And I guess it's because the game isn't using any like full on 3D graphics. Uh, it's all being dealt with in software and it copes with it fine. So let's try a bit of Moto Racer. And I really like Moto Racer 3 because it's got a trials element to it, but it's missing a DLL file. Uh, so rather than find the DLL file, I did try Moto Racer 2. So let's hit start and let's just jump into a game. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of the music. CD audio tracks, let's turn that off. Continue race. Let's see if this is responsive. Oh yeah, it feels fine. Obviously we're talking pretty basic graphics, but yeah, it feels nice. Now I'm using curses for this, which is not ideal for braking, but we'll give it a go. It doesn't seem like we need to brake too much. Oh. Yeah, this is all right, actually. Yeah, happy with that. I'll have to go through some of the older games that I've got and see if I can get them to run. Oh, we used to, oh, I forgot that. Uh, Spacebar is like a real boost and does a bit of a wheelie. Obviously you want to do that on the straights, which, is this going to be a straight? No. Let's give it a go. Just wheeling up the straight. Yeah, nice. Well, that, that feels absolutely fine. Yeah, really happy with that. Bit of retro gaming. And I'll switch back to screen capture. I haven't been using screen capture because it doesn't give you as many different options for resolution. So that's, I wanted to run all this in 640 by 480 uh, just because it works a lot better. So I'm back on two monitors. This is the display link display and this is the Windows 11 display. So you can see I can go between them. They're both running at 1080 now, but I'm gonna show the screen capture on this one. And you might have noticed that when I drag the window about, it goes transparent. Uh, and that's because I've changed the performance. So if you press the Windows key and type in performance, you can adjust the appearance and performance of windows. And I always do adjust for best performance. So when it's on the standard one, it means that you can see everything as you're dragging it around. But on a Pi 5 without graphic support, it's best to just put it on best performance. I haven't overclocked or anything. Uh, I think this is a four gig Pi 5. Let's just have a look about your PC. Yeah, four gig Pi 5 uh, running at 2.4, so standard clock speed and running the latest version with Prism 24H2. Or it might not be the latest version, but it's one of the versions that works with Prism. But these display link adapters, I mean, they've been out for, for years and years. And I didn't buy this display link adapter for this reason. I actually bought it super cheap from CEX, which is a, a used game store in the UK. And uh, I got this, I'm not signed into my account, but I got this for 20 quid, uh, which I thought was a really reasonable deal. I think they're about 50 pound on Amazon. There are various different display link adapters. Let's see if they've got this one. Crikey, I don't know if that one's the same. £76. They're actually pretty hard to find. You can see this dock here has uh, HDMI or VGA from USB 3. So they are about on Amazon, but, but not very many. And I guess that's because a lot of devices support the newer protocol where you can go USB-C to HDMI. But if you have an older laptop, or like in the case of my MacBook, where it only has one DisplayPort output, so the only way I can get two HDMI monitors is to use something like this technology. But if you do end up buying one, uh, just double check which one, because there's loads and loads of products they do that look all the same. And I picked this one because it works with Linux. Uh, you can see Chrome OS. I did see one thing that said it worked with Android as well. So that'll be interesting to see uh, if I can get Android working with it. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.